In this first example, we're going to see how we put an ordinary differential equation into state space form so that then we'll be able to use MATLAB to solve it. In this case, we have the ODE 4y double dot minus 2y dot plus 7y equals 3 sine t. We have the independent variable t and the dependent variable y and its derivatives y dot and y double dot. So a single dependent variable and its derivatives and just one independent variable t. So the rule we want to use here is we want to express this in terms of state variables. So we're going to call, uh, we need, and we're going to have as many state variables as one fewer than the highest derivative of y, because y is our only dependent variable here. So that means I need a state variable for y and a state variable for y dot. So for simplicity, I'm going to call y, I'm going to say is equal to x1, and y dot is equal to x2. If I were to have a y triple dot term, then I would need another state variable for y double dot. But in this case, since the second derivative is the highest, I only need state variables then for the first derivative and for the original variable. All right, so I'm assigning y to x1, y dot to x2. All right, I can then look at what the derivatives of these are. So x1 dot is going to just be y dot and x2 dot is going to be y double dot. I just differentiated the left-hand side, and I differentiated the right-hand side. Note here, and we're going to use it in a little bit, that x2 is equal to y dot, but also x1 dot is equal to y dot. So y dot is defined twice, and we want to be careful of how we use that. We can now rewrite our first equation in terms of the state variables. So again, the rule is anywhere that I can write it just as a state variable, not as a derivative of a state variable, I want to. to. Right, so if we go left to right, uh, y double dot, the only way we can write y double dot in terms of our state variables is as x2 dot. So I can write this as 4x2 dot minus 2 times y dot. y dot, as I just said, I could actually express two different ways. I can express it as x2. I can also express it as y1 dot. My preference always must be to express it as a non-derivative term. So instead of expressing it as y1, x1 dot, I'm going to express it as x2. Plus 7 times y, looking at that table in the upper right, the only way I can write y is by writing x1. And then equals 3 sine of t, that just remains as the same. So again, all my dependent variables and their derivatives, I'm rewriting using what we call the state variables. I can then take this equation, and my goal is to isolate the one derivative term that I have in it. So I can take all of the terms that are not x2 dot and move them to the right-hand side. In addition, I can then divide through by 4 so that I've isolated x2 dot. So we see that the new right-hand side, I move that 7x1 over, it's now a negative 7. I move the negative 2x2 over, I get a positive 2x2, and the 3 sine t remains there, and then I divide through by 4. So I get an expression for x2 dot, and the right-hand side has only state variables, no derivatives, and it has this function of time. And what I also need because I need as many equations as I have state variables. I have two state variables here, x1 and x2. I have a definition for x2 dot, but I also need to write an equation for x1 dot. This is what we call a mapping equation. So as I mentioned at the start of this, I can write y dot two different ways. x2 is equal to y dot, but also x1 dot is equal to y dot. This is where I'm going to put that into play. I have to write as a second equation that x1 dot is equal to x2. So now we see in these bottom set of equations here, I have an expression for x1 dot in terms of only state variables, in this case just x2, and I have a term for x2 dot also on the right hand side only in terms of my state variables x1 and x2, and a function of time. So these two equations at the bottom for x1 dot, x2 dot, are what I'm going to use in my next step to be able to solve for x1 and x2. Now, in the solve step, which we'll get to in a bit, I'm going to know my value for x1 at many points in time. Remember, x1 is just y. And I'll also find a solution for x2 in terms of time. 
or at many places in time. So I'll also have expression or values for y dot at many points in time. 